In this interactive video, you will be introduced into the simplified 3D finite element process guide. This FEM guide is also available as a user profile within the HyperWorks 11.0 student edition, or may be invoked manually. Simulation is certainly much more than feeding data into a black box and retrieving high quality results afterwards. Simulation is challenging your engineering skills and knowledge. Because, it is you who decides whether the simulation results are meaningful and trustworthy. And it will be your task to drive product improvements based on simulation results. We all know from our very own experience, that at the beginning it is hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Naturally, the same accounts for getting started with simulation. Aside from a solid education on the theory of the finite element method, the hands-on exercises are especially important in order to learn more about the many steps involved in simulation. Typically, the practical FEM introduction focuses on the effects of element type, mesh size, constraints, and loads, on the simulation results. These effects can be best explored while looking at rather simple models. Hence, the handling of the finite element preprocessor should also be as simple as possible. On the other side, FEM beginners can become experts quickly, asking for more sophisticated modeling technologies such as advanced hexahedral meshing functionalities, morphing capabilities, mid-surface generation tools and so on. However, instead of learning a different sophisticated expert system, it is by far more efficient to add the requested functionality to the pre-processing environment that you are familiar with. Altair HyperWorks, particularly HyperMesh takes this demand into account by offering what is called the Simplified FEM Process Guide. By employing this process guide the time spent on the introduction into the graphical user interface of the preprocessor is reduced to a minimum. In fact, students only need to learn some of the standard operations such as zooming and rotating. Everything else is driven by the FEM Process Guide. What is this FEM Process Guide? In simple words, it is a click-and-go FEM flowchart allowing students to model, solve and post-process simple 3D finite element models. Ideally, the process guide is used to study the effects of element type, element size, constraints and loads on the simulation results. The interaction with the graphical user interface is therefore reduced to a minimum, but still, beginners and experts use the same graphical user interface. The FEM process covers three steps, namely modeling, solving and post-processing. The modeling section of the process guide allows for the import of a hypermesh binary file, a finite element analysis deck, and geometric data. Additionally, geometry can even be created from scratch. The meshing functionalities include tetra and hexahedral elements. Right after the meshing part is completed, the material needs to be specified followed by boundary constraints and loads. In the solve section, the model is saved as a hypermesh binary file and as an ASCII solver input deck, and of course, results are hopefully computed. In the following post-processing section, provided the analysis run was successfully completed, the results will be automatically loaded. Then it is your part again to evaluate and understand the results. Once you have learned that element type and size may affect the analysis results, you may even use the process guide to start a topology optimization. However, this topic is addressed in a separate video. And overall, please note, that this process guide only works for 3D models. Let's rescale the process manager window by clicking on the vertical bar and dragging it to the left. Here this is done for you, in the first step. We are going to load a hypermesh binary file by importing one. Select the file named Cantilever HM10. What is this model? What did we actually import? Let's take a look at the model info to find out. Apparently, the imported model does not contain nodes or elements. What about geometrical entities such as points, lines, surfaces, and solids? The model consists of one geometrical solid and six surfaces. Take note, it is the geometrical solid which will be meshed with either tetra or hexahedral elements. In other words, if your model consists of surfaces only, meshing will fail. 
Now click the return button. However, before we can start meshing, we need to know the model dimensions. Now we are going to measure the length. Click on the yellow node in order to select node N1. Click on the highlighted node in order to select node N2. The length of the cantilever is 1000 millimeters. Please note, the unit system millimeters is my choice. The unit system may also be centimeters, meters, inches etc. Later on, while defining the material, you need to use the same unit system. And now, let us measure the width. Click on the highlighted node to select node N1. And finally, node N2. The width of the cantilever is 100 millimeters. Close this panel by clicking on the return button. And now it is time to create our very first mesh. Specify the mesh type, which may either be hexa or tetrahedral elements. Although we are using hexahedral elements, I should make sure to note, local refinement, during tetrameshing created smaller elements areas of curved geometry. For instance, a hole would be automatically meshed with smaller elements. Of course, we need to define the requested element size. The element size is in millimeters again. We will use an element size of 50. Type in 50 for the element size and hit enter. Finally, click on the mesh button. Clicking the mesh button creates the requested hexahedral mesh. Then, the process automatically guides you to the material panel. Specify the elastic properties and keep your unit system in mind. Here we are using millimeters, newtons, and tons. From the material panel, you are again automatically guided to the constraints panel. Now, the model is rotated by using the control key and the left mouse button. The intention is to constrain or fix the rear side of the cantilever with respect to all of its translational and rotational displacements. In the course of this demo, all nodes at the rear end of the cantilever will be fixed. Hence, we now need to select the nodes we want to constrain. In order to change the symbol size, simply adjust its value in the field next to size. Note, this only affects the graphical display of the symbols. We are not applying any kind of predefined displacements. Now click on the size. The symbol size will be increased from 10 to 20. We are now done with the constraints. Next we focus on the loads, namely forces. The forces will be applied in a virtual way just along the upper tip of the cantilever. In order to simplify the picking of the nodes, the model will be rotated by using the control key and the left mouse button. In the process guide we select forces. As mentioned before, we are going to select the upper row of nodes along the tip of the cantilever. This selection of nodes will be subjected to forces acting in a vertical direction. Ask yourself, is this loading reasonable? The selected nodes will each be subjected to a force of 500 newtons acting in the negative x direction. The magnitude will be minus 500 newtons per e. In the next step, we need to define the direction of the applied forces. As we mentioned earlier, the direction will be the x direction. Now that we have defined the direction, magnitude, and location of the forces, we can create them by clicking on the highlighted create button. Before we start the analysis, let's have a look at some model details by looking at the model info. Among other entities, the model consists of 189 nodes, 80 elements, and one material. With this understanding we proceed to the next step. Let us select the working directory. The model and file name will be cantilever. Now type cantilever in the model name field and hit enter. The working directory will be hypermesh models. Have you ever had a look at an analysis input file? In order to view the analysis input file of this model, just click on the highlighted button. Even though the input file format of each single finite element program varies, you will always find sections about nodes, here name grids, elements, and information about the employed material, the constraints and the forces. 
most of the file size is related to the nodes and elements. In the starter kit video about analysis, the input file is explained in more detail. Now click on the close button of the text editor. And now, let's start the analysis. As this is just an introductory video, the models used in this guide are rather small, therefore the computation time should be in the order of a few seconds. Once the analysis is completed, the post-processing window will be automatically open. If you want to, you can synchronize the input model depicted in the left part of the window, with the post-processing model on the right. In order to enable the synchronization of both windows, which are normally referred to as clients, click on the highlighted button. To work with the one or the other client, click into its window. Note the cyan colored frame, which tells you that this is the active client. Of course, the panel area has changed in line with the active client. In order to enlarge the post-processing client, activate the highlighted icon. Always keep in mind the information provided in the legend. Ask yourself whether the minimum and maximum values are reasonable. As we are dealing with linear models, which also means small displacements, it is helpful to scale the results for displaying purposes. This can be accomplished in the deform panel. We are going to scale up the shown displacements by a factor of 100. Note, this only affects the graphical display of the displacements. The displacement values themselves remain the same. Now type 100 in the value field and hit enter. Additionally, if you are looking at displacements, I recommend animating your results. This will help you to understand for instance, whether constraints are correctly defined. In other words, your model may show some kind of rotational displacements, even though it shouldn't. This can be best viewed while looking at an animation. Before starting the animation, you need to specify the animation mode. In our case, we select Linear Animation Mode. Start the animation by clicking on the highlighted icon. In order to change the result type, click on the blue framed select. In the pop-up window we select the type, Element Stress. Of course, other stress data, such as normal stresses are also part of the results file. In order to create the stress contour plot, click on Apply. Notice the legend. Since we are using newtons and millimeters, the stress output is in newton per square millimeter, or megapascal. This completes the first video about the simplified 3D finite element process. In the second part, you will learn more about the things happening in the background while employing the process manager.